On this episode of the Star Trek Universe podcast, yesterday was April 5th, a.k.a. First Contact Day, and we got a slew of trailers and announcements to feast upon. We'll talk about all of that right after these shifty souls pitch you products to procure. Welcome to Star Trek Universe Podcast, the podcast where you get to listen in on the continuing Star Trek conversation that two lifelong friends have been having since they were five years old. My name is Matthew Carroll. I'm David C. Robertson. What's up, Dave? Uh, well, I'll tell you what's up. Um, Q is in Picard. Yeah. Yeah. Spoiler confirmed. alert for the news. Uh, confirmed. <laughs> Confirmed and like we 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 reported this, uh, you know. Yeah. We as a our, news yeah. source, our show is batting a hundred, you know, or batting a thousand, whatever. <laughs> I don't know sports, hundred yeah. percent. I don't know. I don't know your sports ball things, but look, we're official scoopers. That's right. That's right. We are actually. It was our listener Jason Smith sent it to us. He's yeah. the scooper. He's well. He's the source. He's our source. He's the source. Yeah, <laughs> we're the uh, <laughs> we're the we're the we're the outlet that ran with the story. <laughs> right, right. And it pissed me off too because I was like, over on Trek Movie and they were like, as we reported late December, and I'm like, bullshitters. I like clicked on the little link and I was like, yeah, they just said as reported by Star Trek Universe podcast. I'm like, yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> follow, the, follow the sources and get all the way to Jason Smith. Um, yeah, that's that's super fun, though, that we yeah. that we ha- had that experience. And if any of our other listeners has any good hunches that they think are true and have some good evidence, hit us up. We'll totally talk about it and maybe get get that happening again let's do it again actually or should we retire from the news game altogether like b- having never been defeated you know never gotten wrong <laughs> oh, well i think it's more or less a situation of like i don't have the bandwidth to like keep up with the news on like i will glance uh, every week or so on star trek news right because there has historically been so little happening in star trek news Usually it's just like, well, this person from Enterprise was in a play. And right. I'm like that. I'm not talking about that. Yeah, but now uh, this week especially, mm. this is like our big week, right. man. This is crazy amounts of stuff. Four new videos, um, three new trailers. Oh, four new trailers, I guess. One being the one about Michelle Nichols. Yeah, and I've added a couple of bits in that were pertinent. From uh, previous weeks that I was like, oh, well, if we, if we get to do another news episode sometime soon, sure. And, you know, it's, it's so weird because, like, first contact day, like, I love that Paramount Plus and I guess Paramount in general is do is making this like a real thing, like a like a, a huge Star Trek day because I'm used to. Finding out is first contact day because I signed on to Facebook or something and they've put up a picture on the official Star Trek account of Zephram Cochran meeting the Vulcans. And I'm like, Oh, it's that day. And then you like just, you know, message a couple of your Star Trek friends. <laughs> hey, happy first contact day with a little, you know, little yeah. uh, Vulcan thing. And that's it. There's nothing there. But now it's like, Oh no, this is a, this is a thing now. Yeah, man. Here's four trailers and like all the news you ever wanted. Yeah, dude. Uh, well, let's, let's get to it. Cause I, I unfortunately we did start kind of late cause we couldn't start talking about everything else before the podcast. So let's get to some Star mm-hmm. Trek talk. Let's do this thing. What's the news? <laughs> yeah, man. We're going <laughs> to, we're going to do Picard first. Uh, we do have a confirmation that Q is going to be there. We're going to have, uh, Brent Spiner returning. Probably is Alton uh, Anigo soon. Jerry Ryan's back as Seven of Nine. Michelle Hurd is back as Ravi. Rios is back. Soji's back. Gerardi's back. Elnor's back. Um, we are also getting Laris, the, the, you know, the Romulan lady who watched over, uh, the vineyard there. Yeah. 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 
we did we don't have confirmation that uh that Zabin is back. That was the guy that was mm-hmm. the Romulan guy that was there. We don't have confirmation for him. They didn't mention anything about Whoopi Goldberg, even though she has said that she's coming back for season two. Or that she's coming in on season two. Right. Um, behind the scenes, the showrunner is going from Michael Chabon to Terry, uh, Matalus, who did 12 Monkeys, the show. Hmm. And, um. I heard that was good. But, I, you know, I never watched it. I never watched it either, like but I did movie. hear positive things, which, like, I, I love the movie, yeah. It, it, it wasn't the kind of show that normally hits my purview, um, because it didn't mm-hmm. seem like, it is, I just didn't hear much about it at all, except a few friends saying how good it was. So that's, yeah, that's good. I, I'm, I, I, that but, makes me excited. But, uh, Michael Shaban is, or Shaban, how you say it, he is, he's going to stay, uh, a writer on the show and he's going to be an executive producer on the show. He's just got other things to do and, uh, he's, he's working on. But this teaser trailer was pretty interesting. Um, yeah. Because it's mostly just like us kind of floating around the, uh, like Picard's office Study or whatever. Study or whatever. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, his not ready room. And, uh, <laughs> we have this Picard voiceover and he says, the true final frontier is time. Time can turn even our most impulsive, our most ill-considered actions into history. What we do in a crisis often often weighs upon us less heavily than what we wish we had done, what could have been. Time offers so many opportunities, but never second chances. And as he's saying all this, we, we're, we're seeing like very specific items. Like there's a, you know, we, we see the vineyard, then we see the clock inside of the study, some kind of artifact on a table. And I, I don't know if we've seen that before, or if I just can't make it out exactly. Um, we see like that enterprise print from Jean-Luc's ready room on the enterprise D. Um, and as he says, you know, what we do in a crisis, we see that the old Starfleet badge, and then Paradise Lost, the book. Yeah, yeah. So I, I'm trying to. Well, I mean, the only connection well, Star I mean, Trek that I have for Paradise Lost is uh, is Khan, right? Have we had another any other mentions of Paradise Lost? Um, no. But what what I'm thinking is like thematically, and the the first thing. Look, man, it's been a long long damn time since I read Paradise Lost. And when I read Paradise Lost, I was well acquainted with, uh, you know, marijuana. So, <laughs> <laughs> the one thing I really always remember about Paradise Lost is the de- the devil is sympathetic. He's a sympathetic character. And I'm wondering if that has something to do with Q there. Hmm. But maybe, you know, maybe I'm just like not seeing it. And I, I'm, I want to go back and look at, 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 uh, at that and, and see if I can glean anything from it. I probably won't because I don't have time to do anything. Um, uh, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of watching it right now and just kind of scan through. Um, uh, yeah. Paradise. But as he's lost. talking about like, as he's talking about what could have been, what they wish he had done in the crisis or whatever, we see the stargazer, which we know was a, it was a, uh, a terrible loss for Picard and, and we've, we've kind of jumped into, into that situation. And, um, we see the sands in the hourglass falling up, like going back in time. Mm-hmm. And then we see a deck of cards on a chess board. And the only card that's turned up is the queen of hearts and the card burns away to leave the corner queue. And of course, then we hear Q from all good things say the trial never ends. And he laughs maniacally. We're getting this thing in 2022. Uh, that is the worst news about this trailer. Wow. I didn't know that. I didn't know it was that late. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And that is the latest thing we're getting. What do you mean? All this other stuff, all this other stuff that we're talking about this episode is coming this year. Okay. Literally everything else. I look um, at this artifact you mentioned and I, I'm, I'm, mm. I feel uh, it's like so, it almost looks like a shield, or like it like does. like like a like an ancient shield almost. Um, yeah, I mean to me it just looked like you know some old alien bullshit. I don't know, <laughs> it's like pro- here's some stone and uh, it's that's kind of it. broken. You're right. It's it's old alien bullshit. 
Uh, uh, and actually, uh, now this is, I'm zooming in theory. on it. <laughs> you heard it here, folks. First, folks, it's our second scoop. That's old alien bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Man, this shot, the shot that you're talking about where you see the old alien bullshit, you also just see the entirety of a study, and you really get a sense of, like, there's so much going on here. Uh, looking at it, the design looks almost Cardassian, um, which, you yeah. yeah, know, uh, is, is he, he had a lot of experiences with the Cardassians. And there were some regrets there, for sure. Yeah. Specifically, I'm thinking about the episode Journey's End, but... Uh, to remind me. Uh, that is the episode where he is deciding to relocate the Native Americans from that world to to give it to the Cardassians. Mm. And Wesley stands up to him and leaves Starfleet over it. And then there's a bunch of weird shit about the Traveler being in the Vision Quest or something. I don't know, something weird. But <laughs> Picard. <laughs> <laughs> There's another book under Paradise Lost too. It says The Long Dark Tunnel by Dixon Hill. Mm. Dixon Hill is the fictional detective that uh Picard always plays on the holiday. Long Dark Tunnel, I mean, he's just been through death. He's literally just died and come out the other side of it. That's true. That's true. I'm looking at I'm just looking up if if The Long Dark Tunnel had anything anything in pop culture. But no, it doesn't appear to. Mm. Yeah. It's interesting though that he's he's. I like that he's still reading his like detective stories. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty fun. All right, but yeah, man, I'm excited about this. This is all really cool stuff. I am down for this. Yeah, man, this makes me happy. Same. Same. I, I gleaned almost nothing from the trailer except for Q. And well, we got time travel. It looks like you know time offers so many opportunities, but never second chances. And we've we've got the the sands going backwards. I'm like, it sounds like we're going to be go- taking a tour of Picard's life here. I think that's possible, but you also have the idea that he just got a new body. Um, yeah, and so the the idea that like putting putting the putting Humpty Dumpty back together again. Um, the, the sand going backwards, like allowing him to have a second chance, like all of that stuff also makes sense with that. So I think you're, you're likely correct that there's a time travel element or go going into the past, but, uh, it also yeah. could just mean that like he thought his time was up and now he suddenly has more time. Yeah. One of my, uh, one of my Twitter mutuals was like, you know, said something about putting Google alerts on for Tom Hardy shaved head. <laughs> yes I, I don't think that he uh like at his age now i don't think he looks like picard in any way anymore <laughs> yeah no yeah it's funny it's really funny uh, yeah no i'm excited to see if we find out any more about the relationship between q and gynan yeah i certainly hope so me too it seemed like there was quite the history there yeah, the, and it's really like one or two interactions that we have to base this on, but it seems like something is up with Guinan and Q, and I want to know. I want to know. Me too, man. Yeah. I've been wanting to know for so long. Yeah, I know. I know it. Please don't pull a Chris Carter. <laughs> Just what did Chris tell Carter us the do? the thing that happened. Oh. Um, it's more like what he didn't do. And he, he's like, oh, let me end the X-Files basically on a cliffhanger because I'm sure we'll do movies. And then he didn't do movies. And then they did one movie and it didn't do well. And he chose not to wrap up anything mm. in that movie. And then several years later, they're like, hey, we're going to give you like another couple of sh- uh, seasons of a show. And they're like, cool. I will end it on a cliffhanger. Yeah. <laughs> He did? He ended on a cliffhanger of the new show? Yep. Wow. And now right. Julian Anderson is saying she's not coming back. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> so, uh, piece of shit. Anyway, uh, do you have anything for else, else for Picard? No, I think I just wanted to mention that one thing. Um, let's get into Discovery, man. All right. 
Uh, so Discovery is coming in 2021. I'm assuming late 2021 from everything I've heard. Uh, what, what, what did you think of this trailer, man? It looked cool. Um, I'm excited. It, it seems like they're doing something a little different, sort of like a natural disaster, it seems like, which maybe that's a mislead, but like this gravitational anomaly seems like some sort of natural disaster is going on. And, um, seems like a chance for them to band together with the Vulcans and maybe push toward a, a larger federation. I, I, I'm just totally in for this whole rebuilding phase of the federation. That sounds real cool to me. The trailer looks cool, uh, as, as Discovery's trailers usually do. And, um, I kind of feel like Burnham, like we've got like, you know, Talking about, like, she gives, has a little trailer speech, a little voiceover about living in uncertainty, and even for a crew with, uh, as familiar with it as this one, the stress is taking its toll, but we are not alone. None of us are. And that's kind of the, the, the notion is that we're not alone and, and all these people are going to come band together, you know, federation, non-federation alike. And, um, because the anomaly threatens us all. We we're yet again coming into a season of discovery where there is some big what's it mystery, right? <laughs> a gravitational anomaly, five light years across, that could go anywhere. I don't know why it could go anywhere, um, but till he says it, it could go anywhere, and we may not have any kind of warning at all. And, uh, we, we get a couple of shots of a lot of destruction and, and, and Michael looking very shocked. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the Cardassian ish lady, she's, she's got like Cardassian bumps. Um, <laughs> but not like a Cardassian neck. I don't, I don't understand. Uh, so could be part Cardassian. Uh, you know, may, yeah. May, make sure, like, says, Oh, Captain Burner, make, make no mistake. You are in charge. Okay. 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 You are um, in charge. Is that what she says? That's what she said. That's what All she right. said. Um, you know, a lot, I kind of feel like a lot of like, I feel like the, this, this discovery trailer just really placates us a lot. Like, it's just like, whatever it is, we'll figure it out together. It's, you know, just very kind of ham fisted. And that's fine. That's what they were going for. And uh, I look forward to <laughs> the season. I'm just sort of like, eh, okay. <laughs> yeah, you, you know how much I prefer ongoing storytelling at, to episodic or a serialized storytelling yeah. to episodic, but there is something, some balance that D Space Nine struck where like you can still have sort of individual adventures. And I do kind of feel like because Discovery doesn't really do that, it's just yeah. always about like some big massive thing that has to destroy the universe, you know? Yeah. And it's, it's, it's a little taxing at this point. And yeah. We're what, this is the fourth season. And yeah, every season has yeah. been about something that something literally like universe destroying. I think the best part of the trailer t- for, for me was Burnham saying we're facing something we don't understand. And it looks like they're in like a big buggish looking alien background. And it looks like Burnham's mother is there, and uh, and everyone has freaking swords on their backs. What? Which, look, <laughs> which looks dope. I don't know what to think about it. I'm just yeah, okay. That looks cool. Yeah, that sounds um, real cool. I don't think I noticed that shot. Yeah, it's just like they're all down there with like swords. <laughs> they're like all Elner. <laughs> <laughs> Her mom's been training I, you know, them all. I'm, yeah, I'm down for that. Whatever. Oh, yeah. I'm looking um, at that shot you're talking about. This almost could be... Yeah, no, you're right. This is them with some sort of melee weapons on their backs. Their mother, her yeah. mother. Um, for a second, I thought it might be the dark uh, mirror universe. But no, it doesn't... Yeah, her mother's there. Hmm. And some sort of crazy bug creatures, yeah. Hmm, interesting. Yeah. It feels... It almost feels... And it probably won't by the time we get to it. It almost feels at this point like... It's a little soon to be getting another Discovery season. Huh. Uh, I don't you know. I don't agree with that. Uh, well, I mean, we're not getting it yet, first off. It's late 21, 21 probably. 
Right. That's what I was saying. Like by the time it come actually comes around, right, April, right, right. It yeah, won't feel that way anymore. It's probably not too soon for a trailer, but yeah, it it, it would be weird because it just ended. But uh, it does. It, it's weird because like the whole covid push like really pushed the last season back and then this season they probably got to work on it so i don't know it's just yeah everything feels weird and it feels weird to go from discovery and then skip over picard and go back to discovery Mm-hmm. but it seems like i can definitely see why they would have a harder time getting that show filmed with the older actors you know yeah well they've had a couple of setbacks with covid too so yeah uh, do you have anything else for Discovery? Uh, no, I'm I'm good. Let's go on to the next thing. All right. So Thursday, uh, Thursday, August twelfth, twenty twenty one, is when we're getting the new season of Lower Decks. Sweet. That's soon. Um, I there's not a lot here in this teaser. Like we we got the. Uh, we got uh, Mariner saying, what's up? We doing sci-fi stuff today, which made me laugh right out of the gate. Yeah, me too. And also I was like, yeah, that's Mariner, though. Uh, it, there are two, two lines in this that really made me laugh, and it was that and then the Riker thing, like, too many licks yes. and not enough comps. What does that even mean? <laughs> <laughs> yes. And as a musician, I let me say, it. it means very little. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you're 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 not a jazz musician. Though. I work with That's... jazz musicians. I know what licks and comps are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw people complaining that that line doesn't mean anything, and then other people saying like, "It's the jazz thing." Like, right? Yeah, <laughs> like trying to licks trying to jazz explain <sighs> it to people. Right? Licks are just when you uh, <laughs> like actually play. Like like you noodle on the guitar, you you play a lick. And mm-hmm. comps are when you look at the chords and play the chords, and you try to comp the entire sound of the thing, not just the uh, not just a, a solo or lead line. So like licks and comps, right. they are two different things. And if you have too many licks and not have comps, it's uh, it's chaotic. So I guess that could be what he means. <laughs> well, no, what I was what I took it as is you know. <laughs> They they were under fire, so if only one person is shooting, they're providing the licks, but there's no accompaniment. So Riker and the Titan has to provide the accompaniment in the jam session. Mm. <laughs> so they have to fire back. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, that 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 could work. Uh, it, I, I just it, it, based on what's going on in the scene, though, it's just them being fired on a bunch. So it's not like them right. coming to the That's rescue. What I'm like oh so like yeah, they're they're being fired they're the, firing the, the back bad guys would are, be an accompaniment to the bad guys yes. firing all right right that's why Riker says this jam session's got too many licks from the bad guys and not enough accompaniment but because they need to fire back <laughs> all right I could I could see that I could see that <laughs> but yeah we we yeah we. Man, they had like the TOS film era Miranda class ship in there. They got Mugatu. They had, uh, Mariner in one of those red fighting uniform things that Riker and his dad was in. <laughs> I don't remember what those are called. <laughs> yeah, I, I, it was fun. I enjoyed it. And Mike McMahon said that, uh, it has been renewed for a third season of 10 episodes. Wow. Hmm. Just watching, uh, yeah, like I, this, this trailer, it, you know, it's just, it, every time I watch Lower Decks, I feel like it, should this be a Star Trek show or should it be like a parody of Star Trek? You know what I mean? And it's such a weird, ba- they, they, so far they've struck a pretty good balance. I definitely feel like the characters are silly, but like they, it still can feel like Star Trek well enough, you know? Yeah, I tend to. I tend to not take it seriously as canon, but if they showed up in live action or something at some point, or there was reference to them, I, I wouldn't mind. Right. Right. You know what Same. I mean? Like, it, yeah. was, it would just be like, eh, whatever. Some of it's just a little out there, but, you know, um, my sister, uh, Brittany, she, um, 
I was trying to get her to to catch up on all the Star Trek, and she's like, it's so overwhelming. She's she's a huge Star Trek nerd, but just had not seen any of the new stuff, uh, starting with Discovery. And uh, was especially not looking forward to Lower Decks. Mm. And um, she wound up just being like, screw it. I need something light and fun. I'm going to watch that first. And uh, she actually wound up really enjoying it. She she was like, yeah, this is actually pretty funny. Yeah, <laughs> it is, man. It is. All right. So um, we have finally our first look at uh, what will be the emergency training hologram Janeway for Star Trek Prodigy. Did you did you see this? Uh, I saw the photo. It's just a photo, right? Yeah, it's just a photo. And um, apparently the, the series will take place in the Delta Quadrant. Mm. And it takes place in the year 2383 after Star Trek Voyager and Nemesis. And will follow a motley crew of young aliens who must figure out how to work together while navigating a greater galaxy in search for a better future. Mm. They know nothing about the ship they've commandeered. A first in the history of the Star Trek franchise, but over the course of their adventures together, they will be introduced to Starfleet and the ideals it represents. Huh. We neat. don't know. We don't, we only know what's coming in 2021. One would assume between Lower Decks and Discovery. Um, so yeah, and that's going to be on Paramount Plus as well. That's really neat. That looks it's very exciting. I like that a lot. Um, that idea of like just some aliens coming in contact with some, probably a Federation ship or something that Voyager left behind, I'm guessing. And then them sort of like being introduced to the ideals of the Federation. That sounds fun. I dig it. Yeah. I, I think it might be something that got, you know, maybe a, a ship that like went back into the Delta quadrant to investigate something maybe with a plan to get back and and somehow got abandoned or, or lost. Who knows? I could even see it being Voyager, honestly, because they did so many weird temporal things and like just like we they left a Riker on that planet, <laughs> Thomas Riker or whatever. Like I could totally see them leaving like a a duplicate like Voyager. a duplicate Voyager crashed on a planet somewhere, totally. Yeah, I could see that. I mean they think they did that in an episode where they like Something, well, I think we got like some kind of alternate future where, I mean, they've done that in a few episodes. Yeah, exactly. That's what I mean. Yeah, exactly. It is like they did all that kind of stuff all the time because they did a lot of like retconning, uh, at the end of the episodes. And so it's like, yeah, this is pretty likely. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I remember there was like that whole episode. And it was one of my favorite episodes of Voyager where we flash forward into the future and like there's a society that's been telling, that has like a museum dedicated to like the warmongering Janeway and her crew. And then it turns mm. out that like they, they, they pull the doctor back online and he has to like set him straight about like what it actually was. And it was like a possible future from a mirror Voyager or something or, or some sort of duplicate Voyager that, you know, that version of the doctor wound up in the future or something like yeah. something weird like that. They did a lot of that kind of stuff. And I could totally see them just leaving like a fully, <laughs> a fully duplicated Voyager somewhere in the Delta quadrant. <laughs> I feel like I've gotten the story elements wrong somehow. And someone's going to be like, you should be doing a Star Trek podcast. And I'll be like, yeah, no, no one's making me. <laughs> like no one gave me the job i'm just doing it yeah we don't do this podcast because we're experts we do it because we're fans and we just do it because we like to talk about the stuff and honestly as i've said before voyager's my least favorite so i've gone back like zero times to watch it like i just remember it first run and that's what i remember yeah as we always say on the uh mcu cast like if listeners have uh, remember something we don't like please let us know like i, I think oh, the yeah, show absolutely. the show is way more interesting like when people are uh, writing in and and giving us like set, sort of feedback to like bounce off of and we uh, over on the mcu guys all the time we learn things from our listeners like oh you missed this connection like oh yeah we did good call that's great <laughs> yeah and that's the same on dc on screen yeah um, so yeah, if you so, guys out there are offended by Dave's complete mischaracterization of that plot line from Voyager, <laughs> I don't think it was, but, you know, maybe it is. I don't know. No, I don't remember it, but I'm pretty sure it was. 
<laughs> um, <laughs> I don't remember it. <laughs> I do. I remember it enough to be like, that's a really cool concept. Yeah, totally. Let's let's hit up some of this movie news here. Um, mm. Paramount Pictures apparently has hired a Discovery writer to uh, to write a Star Trek movie, and that came to us from Deadline. So it's pretty, you know, reputable source. And that writer is Kalinda Vasquez, which is. Fantastic because she has she was named after a Kelvin character from an original series episode by any other name. So that's hilarious. Wow. But um yeah, they've uh she hatched an original movie and she is writing the script for it. Apparently they they dug her pitch. Neat. And uh JJ Abrams Bad Robot is producing for the project. And um yeah, I, I don't know what else there is to say. She she uh, joined Discovery as a consulting producer in season three. She wrote the teleplay for the episode Terra Firma Part Two, which is a good damn episode. Honestly, um, she also wrote the Short Treks episode Ask Not, which again, good episode. Uh, and uh, she has previously worked for Fear the Walking Dead, Once Upon a Time, Prison Break, and Nikita. So maybe she had really good episodes in all those, and I just didn't care because I didn't watch any of them. Mm. The only ones I've seen a good bit of those are uh, Fear the Walking Dead, and uh, mm. that's some pretty good, solid episodes here and there. It's not a great show, but it's it's pretty good. Right. I know Once Upon a Time is trash. Uh, but, yeah, uh, <laughs> I, I, it's one, that's another one of those where I watched the first episode and I was like, subjectively hmm. speaking, <laughs> subjectively spe- no, you know what? My, my wife used to watch once upon a time. And at the beginning mm-hmm. she was like, dude, this is a really good show. And then about midway through, she was like, I just want it to end. It did not take me that long. I watched the first episode and I was like, this is. This looks really good. Like, and I think that's the thing. There's two shows that I can speak to like that. That one and Supernatural, which I know there's a lot of Supernatural stands mm-hmm. out there. And there's a lot of Once Upon a Time stands. But both of those shows, I watched the first episode and the quality was so high. They, they, they were really well thought out characters, really well thought out uh, episodes because they're the pilot. They're, they get yeah. to work on them for five years or whatever. And then like... <laughs> The second and third episodes were so bad, I bailed out. I was like, nope, this is bad. Right. This is bad TV. <laughs> now, I hear Supernatural came around in the end and got really good. And I've heard once upon a time, if you stick with it, there's like certain characters you get invested in and you want to know what happens. But still, it's mostly trash. Well, I'm going to tell you this. like, what, By the end of Once Upon a Time, I was just like, I did not watch it all, but I would like wander through and just like hear and, and just be like, what the hell is this? Yeah. And she would be like, I just want us upon a time. Uh. I had the same exact experience. <laughs> like, this is so bad. <laughs> My roommate watched it, uh, 10 years ago or whatever. When it was, when it was on it was a long time ago. No, it wasn't 10. It was probably four or five years ago. My, my roommate from four or five years ago was watching it and I, I would walk through the room and just be like, what is this trash? Like, and I'd like hear like one line and I'd just be like, that is a horrible line. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now I hear very good things about prison break. I don't know. Me too. I, Me too. I've never seen it. Never seen it. Not one lick. Only comps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've, I've never seen prison break either, but I've heard, I've heard good things over the years for sure. Yeah. And also this, uh, Kalinda Vasquez is, uh, working with George R. R. Martin for the time travel series on HBO Road Marks that she will be mm. executive producing and show running. Mm, I love a good, uh, I love a good time travel story. And honestly, I HBO is just batting a thousand with their stuff lately. I, I have liked almost everything HBO's put out. Yeah. I mean, I never saw Game of Thrones, but it's not television, Dave. It's HBO. Right. Um, uh, I did. I saw Game anyway. of Thrones. And Game of Thrones is hit or miss. Uh, 
it, it has some amazing parts and it's some groundbreaking television, but like uh-huh. it has some big missteps in it too. Yeah. I hear you. All right. Let's get to this Voyager documentary because I, I've done a complete turnaround on Voyager documentary. It, they've called it to the journey. And it's the same group that did what we left behind the DS9 documentary. And a lot of them were still involved in the TNG doc that William Shatner directed, uh, Chaos on the Bridge. So, uh, to the journey has wrapped up their campaign on Kickstarter and they are the most successful crowdfunded documentary in history. They made $1,260,245. Man. That actually almost doubles what they got for what we left behind, which is the DS9 doc. Yeah. They've completed all of their goals, all of their stretch goals, which means, you know, this thing is going to get uh, a Voyager reunion in London. They're going to expand the scope of the film from 60 minutes to 90 minutes. Um, backers get free digital soundtracks. Like, they're going to compose an original score for the film. <laughs> they free digital poster and mystery perks, one sheet mosaic movie poster. They license the Voyager title theme music by Jerry Goldsmith, uh, magnets, all sorts of crap. Uh, interestingly though, here they, they have now at 825,000, they got to remaster some show footage used in the documentary to HD. And, um, just like they did for DS9. Neat. And at 900,000, they're remastering all the show footage used in the documentary to HD. And now we're going to get an exclusive never before seen Voyager surprise. And they said they didn't want to do the same kind of like, let's do like a writer's room. Let's break season eight. And I, I, I mean, I've seen Voyager enough to know that you, that you don't want that, that writer's room doing anything else. <laughs> 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 Your laugh is a maniacal laugh. <laughs> hey, I said a mean thing, but no, I, I'm really, I'm really interested in this because they, I'm now seeing that they're talking about they, they, they've got an interview with Cherry Taylor, they who was the showrunner, and um, my God, I'd love to pick her brain. Um, I've been watching In the Heat of the Night. And her and her, she and her husband were brought on to In the Heat of the Night in season two to show run that. And they just f- f- quietly, but somewhat famously clashed with Carol O'Connor or more like he clashed with them. And, uh, he basically had them fired by the se- by the third season. And, uh, I just, you can't find like a whole lot about why I, I just like, I want to know all the things like, like her husband's passed away now, but she show ran in the heat of the night with him. But, uh, between the, in the heat of the night and Voyager, I'm like, Jerry Taylor, I just want to know all the things. (laughs) Um, so they have said that they are doing some kind of $1 million surprise with, with the, with the Voyager cast. And it might not happen. He says, we are planning on doing something never seen before. Something with the actors themselves is all I can say. But because of rights and negotiation, it is premature to get into it. Um, and he said it would be something new. So I don't know if it would be like the DS9 doc where they're like singing. I don't know if it would be like an actual honest to God scene, like an update on where the characters are. Mm, I wonder if Who they, knows? I bet that would be hard. I mean, I guess with parody or something, they could get away with that. But mm. I bet that would be trickier unless they got permission somehow. Because is hasn't Paramount been really shutting down all their like fan videos or fan shows and stuff? Yeah, they did for a minute. Yeah. Well, they shut down that one uh because they were they, the the way he, that guy was crowdfunding he was basically using it for profit somehow I don't know. they didn't like the way he was doing stuff he basically uh, gotcha. ruined it for everybody that sucks um so yeah Brandon Braga who was one of the Voyager showrunners like was asked him how he was going to top David Zapone how he was going to top the DS9 writers room uh element and he didn't want to do that again but you know he wanted to they started working on whatever this surprise is um 
But apparently they're going to actually get into some of the, the controversies. Like, they're going to talk to people uh, from the Paramount side. He says, this is the first Star Trek show that was on a network since the original. It was the flagship of UPN. Certainly, it was not the greatest relationship between the studio and the producers, so we want to delve into that. Um, well, they did a good bit of that with the DS9 doc, where they just really like mm-hmm. focused on the idea that... Um, you know, D- Ronald D. Moore wanted to push in a certain direction to serialize, and they were always wanting to push him away from that. And he just kind of like yeah. did it anyway. <laughs> yeah, and he, they're going to talk about. Uh, he says they're they're not avoiding controversy at all. Like they're going to cover Jennifer Leon being replaced by Jerry Ryan. They're going to talk about the, their struggles with UPN. They're going to talk about. I mean, I, they're just they're veering right into the, all the controversies. <laughs> with Voyager. He says they're, they're going to cover warts and all. Um, he says, I would argue like with chaos in the bridge, we cover the turmoil on the first two seasons of next generation, but ultimately it is a story of the success and the brilliance of the shift in the show in the third season and how it went on to greatness. Uh, but we will be very candid with Voyager. And, you know, there were, there were controversies. There were elements of, of, um, uh, contention between Jerry Ryan and, uh, Kate Mulgrew. There were issues between, um, Robert Beltran, the, the actor who played Chakotay and the writers. Like he felt like they were not good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and has been very vocal over the years about it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that th- there were several things that, uh, were not even necessarily, you know, hanging around until after the show was off to, to come out. So, right. Um, I was honestly kind of just feeling like maybe this documentary was just going to ignore all of that. And, um, sounds like that's not the case. Yeah. And that makes me want to watch it because, you know, even if I don't like a show, like I, maybe even especially if I don't like a show, right. I am especially interested in, in what happened behind the scenes because I'll tell you this, like, I hate the Joel Schumacher movie, Batman and Robin, mm-hmm. but knowing what went on behind the scenes, I watched that movie completely differently now. Huh. Like, I know that Joel Schumacher was walking around, like, there was a, there was a narrative at some point that Joel Schumacher would, you know, before the scenes would say, remember everyone, we're making a cartoon. And I'm like, oh, what a jackass. But now knowing that like everything he tried to do, the, the studio was like, no, it's not nice enough. No, it's got to be like, uh, you know, they were basically wanting to make toy commercials. Right. <laughs> so like they were just cutting them off at the knees at every, at every shot. So now I'm like, Oh, he said that sarcastically. He was upset. Yeah. It, it just totally different. Lends a different flavor. Yeah, man. Absolutely. So. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I would, I would love to get some, uh, new perspective on Voyager. Yeah. Um, apparently, and this is, this is really cool too. He says they, uh, they wanted to actively avoid the talking head syndrome of the documentary. And one of the way that, uh, they wanted to quote, mix things up is to have interviews in interesting locations. Like Kate Mulgrew was shot on the bridge of the cruise ship at Star Trek, the cruise. But, um, apparently Garrett Wang, the guy that played Harry Kim has a bunch of mini DV tapes that he filmed behind the scenes on Voyager that have just never been seen. And they're getting access to all of that. Wow. Interesting. And, uh, you know, when they were doing chaos on the bridge, they wound up to like break up all the interview footage. They wound up having, um, like these little like drawings slash animations that worked really well. So I, I guess he's, he's looking at something maybe like that, or he said possibly adding some animation like chaos on the bridge, but also going to have these like mini DV tapes that, that Garrett Wang made that, that just sounds it's sounding more and more like something I want to see. <laughs> That's what I'm, I'm, I'm excited about it. Yeah, man. It sounds really cool. So, I am, I am, I, you know, I'll be there. Yeah. They're planning a theatrical event and hoping for Paramount Plus, which, you know, seems like it would be obvious, but it's not apparently. 
Um, right. Well, if they're doing an independent documentary, in a way, you like almost yeah. want them to stay independent, so they don't like. I don't want them to get nice with Paramount Plus and not show the warts and all. You know, I'd rather them right, be independent right. and make something interesting. Yeah. Um, he says the uh, the plan is to release the documentary in late 2022 with backers getting digital copies or Blu-rays. Backers can also buy tickets to premiere events in Los Angeles and New York. Uh, they're hoping to replicate what they did with the DS9 doc and do a theatrical release event with Fathom. Uh, he, his opponent feels that To the Journey will have a wider appeal to the general public than mm-hmm. what we left behind. I agree with that. Voyager was more popular. And he is holding out hope that uh, 455 films and will get the other Trek documentaries uh, somewhere streaming, and hopefully with the rest of the Star Trek universe. Um, he says, it's still possible. That's the beauty of crowdfunding. Now we get the money to produce this film on our own and bring it to CBS, so we don't need a sale yet, but we will. That's the way the system works. Uh, we raised enough through crowdfunding to at least get through to production, but then the licensing fees are enormous on these films, and that's where you need to have the sale to cover all of that. But yes, the answer is it is absolutely still possible. It's still possible they can acquire all of the previous Star Trek docs, with the exception of For the Love of Spock, they are all available. Um, my hope is they all find their eventual home on Paramount+, Plus because we're better for them to be. I, I agree. I want to see all of these things on Paramount+. Plus. Yeah. Um, and this one, I didn't even know this one was happening. Woman in Motion. Uh, Nichelle Nichols, yeah. Star Trek, and, and, and the making of NASA. Um, this looks good. Yeah, it looks really interesting. It's the story of apparently how Nichelle Nichols, not only was she a, a trailblazer in the acting department, but she apparently uh, connected up with NASA and helped them find help them helped encourage them to find young people of color and women to be part of the space program and apparently like change the face of mm-hmm. she's like somewhat responsible for changing the face of the space program is the case that this trailer makes and i'm assuming that's kind of what the documentary seems like it's going to be about which is neat i didn't know i didn't know she, yeah. that she'd been involved in that at all so that's cool i don't think i knew that either um I had heard that they were doing some sort of Nichelle Nichols thing. And I just kind of was like, okay, because you know, I've, I've heard all the old stories from all the, you know, all the old members, there was movies and stuff, but not like necessarily. This is a very particular story. Yeah. Right. No, I didn't know this story. Like, I'm like, yes, it is amazing that you were going to quit the show, but Martin Luther King Jr. told you not to. That's awesome. I've heard that story a million times though. That's one of her talking points. That's what they ask her about. Right. In, in like every interview. I didn't know about this. <laughs> yeah. This is real cool. Real, real cool. And there's a, and there's a trailer for it. We'll put, we'll put links to all these four trailers. There's a mm-hmm. um, Picard trailer, Discovery sure. trailer, Lower Decks, and a, uh, uh, whatever it's called. This was the woman on, uh, what's the name of this? Michelle Nichols one? Woman in Motion. Woman Michelle in Motion. Nichols, Star Trek and the remaking of NASA. Yeah, we'll, tr- we'll put that all that in the show notes. Um, yeah. It's real, um, real cool. It is, it is a solid trailer and made me want to watch it. So, and that's cool. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, and then we got confirmation a while ago, a little while ago, that History Channel is launching the Center Seat docuseries. And that is like a full series that of do, like a full documentary series about the 55 year, 55 year history of the franchise. Uh, each episode is going to focus on a different chapter in Star Trek history, starting with the inception of the original Star Trek at Desilu. Um, it's going to have interviews with people who worked on the show in front of and behind the cameras, uh, experts. And it's the Nacelle company. It's the people that do the, um, uh, the movies that made us, the toys that made us, all that. Huh. Neat. Um, and they're going to reveal never before seen backstage stories and offer fresh insights, which I've read so many books and watched so many documentaries about Star Trek in my life. This is exactly what I need. Fresh insights <laughs> with no stone. No, no stone is left unturned, including lesser known aspects of the franchise, like the animated series and phase two. Yes, please. And by the way, I've read books on both. <laughs> Hello, howdy. Um, <laughs> I'm that guy. Um, 
I'm 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 the guy that's gonna be sitting there like taking notes and going, yeah, that's wrong. <laughs> um, or oh, that does fill in a gap. The uh, yeah, so the it was created by the Nacelle CEO Brian Volk Weiss, who will also be the director. He says Star Trek from before I was ten years old gave me the closest thing I have to a code to follow in my life. If it wasn't for the words "I don't believe in the no win scenario," I would be very alone, broke, and miserable in this world. So to say this is mm. a passion project would be a tremendous understatement. That's awesome. So I, I am, I am down for this. I, and that's coming in September of 2021, uh, likely because that coincides with the 55th anniversary of mm-hmm. Star Trek. Makes me sad. There was so little going on during the 50th, you know, I know it really I does. Know. Especially when, uh, Dr. Who happened right around the same time and it was, there was so much going on. Yeah. Um, <laughs> One of the executive producers for the show is Mark Altman, who is the co-host of the Inglorious Trexperts podcast and the co-host of the 50-year mission, the complete uncensored, unauthor- unauthorized oral history of Star Trek. And uh, TNG cast member Gates McFadden, who played Beverly Crusher, is one of the executive producers. So Neat. Yep. Yeah. I'm I'm down, man. Lots of good Star Trek content coming in the next year, man. Yeah, dude. I can't wait. I can't wait. Um. Well, uh, any other that's any it. other n- tidbits? I guess that's it. Uh. Well, guys, the, thank you the for bits are titted. joining us. I, I'm glad we titted all the bits. <laughs> and uh, we'll be back. Uh, we'll be back real soon. With the, we're going to finish up our coverage of the uh, the best. Of the uh, top five of the original series, I have had a pretty wild few weeks uh, with, with a lot yes, of personal have. stuff, and uh, so so we're trying As to have I. Oh yeah, yeah. So mm. yeah. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, man. It's 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 a, it's been a hard time. I think it's a hard time for a lot of people with COVID, and then coming back from COVID, and the world opening up again is a weird time. Um, but man, like. With uh yeah, we've had a lot of a lot of personal things going on in my family and um yeah, just trying to get it all trying to get all that done and we've kind of fallen off for a few weeks, but we'll be back real soon with more of that. So thank you guys so and much. Clearly we'll be Sorry, good. We'll be back with all this other stuff coming out. Oh I yeah, mean. yeah, yeah. Well, if, if you're <laughs> if you're joining us because you're hearing the news, or you just heard about how this one podcast called that Q thing a few months ago, um. Then uh-huh. uh, please subscribe because we'll be uh, doing a lot more of that stuff, uh, a, lo- a lot more of coverage of Star Trek all this year. Lots of cool stuff coming, and we'll be here with it. Yeah, that's all I got. That's all I got. Uh, Jolan True, live long and prosper. Cake is eternal. Was that the line? I don't remember. I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Star Trek Universe Podcast, a Stranded Panda production. If you'd like to hear more from David C. Robertson, check out the DC On Screen Podcast or Maladjusted.tv for his web videos. If you'd like to hear more from Matthew Carroll, check out the Marvel Cinematic Universe Podcast or listen to his music. Just search for Matthew Carroll anywhere you get music. 